And this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. Today, we're going to take a first look at the United States Patent and Trademark Office's new system for filing trademark applications. Now, this is just a first look. It is still in beta testing. I don't actually recommend using it yet <laughs> as of time I'm recording this. I'm recording this in late September 2024. They will probably be launching this some months in the future from now. And then I will record a new tutorial that actually shows you exactly how to use it once they kind of work out the kinks. Right now, it is just in beta testing. But I want to give you a first look on how it works. All right, so this is the United States Patent Office website. You go to Trademarks, Apply Online, and then right now this is how it looks, that you can try the Trademark Center beta, and then down here is the ones you'd actually use. So this is where you go to the initial application forms. But here is the beta. So let's go ahead and click on that and take a look. Now the old system for filing Trademarks Online looks very old and is a bit clunky. It works fine, but not the best. So here's their new system is much more um, user-friendly and kind of modern looking, if you know what I mean. All right, so we can do a new application or view the trademark docket. All right, let's do a new application and it's opening up a new tab and then I have to sign in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in and then I'll come back. And by the way, before you can file a trademark application, you have to create a ID.me account and create a United States Patent and Trademark Office account. Uh, and that can be a whole thing because you have to verify your identity and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so here we are at the Trademark Center beta testing. All right, this is a beta release. This is the most common things. And then they're giving a bunch of information that's helpful for everybody. And it's a good reminder that when you file stuff at the Trademark Office, there's no right of confidentiality in what you file and you will get contacted with a bunch of scams. So just be aware of that. So there's two paths that you can do, TEAS plus and standard. And it's kind of neat, this, this system actually has your cost over here in the corner, which I think is gonna be really helpful for people. Okay, so plus you get lower fees by providing a more complete application. So the filing fees are 250 per class of goods and services. You have to use the, the trademark identification manual. Think of this as a database of class classes that are pre-written out. I highly re recommend using it if it is all possible, if it, you think it can apply to your trademark. Provide complete information in your application. Hire a US licensed attorney. If, you, if your domicile is in a foreign country, you have to do that. For standard, is cost more money, it's 350 because you're providing less stuff. You get you write your own description, which I don't recommend unless there's no possible way to do it your own. You also, one of the things is, is that you you will, if you're outside the United States, if you do not have a US domicile, you will have to hire a lawyer before you can get your trademark through. But if you do the standard, you can do the initial filing and then hire a lawyer later. However, there, I've had people come and hire me when they did that and they filed stuff wrong and so we had to start over anyway, so. Be careful about that. But we're gonna assume that you're here in the United States and you're doing the TAS plus. All right, so we click that and then click continue. All right, so here's something that's actually kind of neat is you can import your info from your account. I'm excited about this <laughs> as a lawyer. So can I, let's if I click this. Oh yeah, it imports all my information. So I don't actually have to type that over and over again. That is awesome. I'm very excited about that. That isn't helpful, not helpful for you though. <laughs> because you're not a lawyer. Now, when you're, um, let's see, other point of attorney, that's fine. Uh, when you're doing it yourself, you won't be filling in attorney information. Adding owners. The owner is, could be you as a human person or it could be an LLC or corporation, something like that. So we're just gonna put an individual. The individual's country of citizenship has to go in there. And I'm gonna put myself in here. So it's gonna be Elizabeth Weinstein, it, are you doing business or training a different name? I'm not gonna click that. This is your mailing address. I'm putting in a fake mailing address. By the way, all this information I'm putting in, you put in your own information. Sometimes I have people who like literally just type what I typed. And I'm like, no, I, this is made up information. You need to put in your own. Okay, and the address, we're in oh, country, United States, city, San Francisco, California, 94133. Domicile address. So domicile address, we're just gonna click this for right now, but domicile address generally is, cannot be a PO box, cannot be a, a you know mailbox, like UPS store mailbox, anytime mailbox, virtual mailbox, it has to be a real physical location. They look it up with the post office, they look it up on Google Maps. So they will find out if it's not a real location. Then you put the address here, 
we're just going to click this right now. The owner's email address, you have to put the an email address. You could, you know, get a special Gmail just for this, but they will email you. So don't make a fake email. Okay. Okay. The owners can't be the same as the attorneys. Interesting. All right. I'm going to put in a different email address. So phone number is not required. The trademark office hasn't called me about a trademark in so many years that I don't remember the last time they did. Now they email me if it's informal. It used to be that they would call me as a lawyer all the time. So you don't have to put in a phone number here and then you might get scam calls because it's publicly available. You can add a URL to owner's website. If your website's already up, I do recommend doing this because that way when they Google the trademark that you're submitting, they find your website, they know it's you. So they don't be like, oh, there's this other person. No, that's me, you know, so it makes that better. All right, but we're gonna say we're not doing that right now. All right, who will receive updates about the application and it's gonna be the, um, me, the lawyer. Uh, and so you would have it be yourself if you were not having a lawyer hire this. Would you like to send a courtesy copies? You can put yes. And then you can put your like other email addresses of your business partner or whatever. And I usually put an, I put like what my personal Gmail address for all my trademark applications as the extra email. That way, if something is wrong with my business email, I still get the communication. Okay. So what is your trademark? All right, so I want to protect wording alone. This is actually really nice. They're actually explaining things a little bit. This is the broadest scope. I wanna protect what my trademark looks like. This is typically a logo, symbol, that kind of thing. And then something else, you can trademark sounds, you can trademark other things. I've literally never done one of those applications, um, but that is possible to do. Smells, all kinds of things can be trademarked. Okay, so let's say wording alone. So we're gonna click that. Now, if you click what your trademark looks like, you have to file some more things and I can show you that in a little bit. Um, did you search for your mark before you do anything? You should search for your mark. I agree. We're going to make up a terrible name for a trademark. Best consulting. You can't change this. And they say that there. Okay. Does it need any, oh, does it need any translations? We're going to say no. Those are English words. But if you put yes, then you have to translate it. Does it have the name, portrait, likeness, or signature of a person? So I have two trademarks that involve my name. One is for Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. That is for this stuff that you're watching right now. And then I have one for Elizabeth Off Grid, which is for my travel and, and alternative living channel. And both of them involve my name, either my just my first name or my full name. And so I have to sign something to give myself permission to get that trademark. It's kind of funny, but that's just how it works. So have, no, we don't have it for that. What's the filing basis? So the filing basis is going to be, do you, you use your trademark in, com in commerce already? In other words, you're making money. It's monetized in some way, shape, or form. You intend to do it in the future. Or it's there's some foreign filing basis. Um, so most of the time, you're going to either have, you're already using it, you're making money, or not. <laughs> and now if you have a foreign application or a foreign trademark, you would probably base it on that because that would be earlier if you aren't already selling it here in the United States. So here, let's assume that someone's already using it in commerce. We're going to check that and I'll show you what comes up next. Then you have to identify the goods and services in the ID manual. So let's say we're going to do life coaching. What comes up there? Life coaching services in the field of, and then you put in the field of um, personal development. I don't know. And then I add that. And now you look down and then it's listed here. Great. Okay. It says class 41. That's the number class and then the description. Let's say I wanted to also do education and training. I'm going to see what comes up there. Uh, do, 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 there's a lot of things in education. Education services, namely training educators in the field of. No, I don't want that. Let's go to page two. What is here? No, educational name of conducting. Ooh, this is what I want. Conducting classes in the field of personal development. We're going to add that. All right, now you can go down here. These are both under class 41, which means you only pay the $250 because it's two descriptions, but they're in the same numbered class. Okay. So you can see over here, it's the total cost is still $250. Now I'm going to hit continue. Now you have to do your specimen. Okay. We're going to add a specimen 
I'm literally just going to upload some, I'm going to upload some random file. <laughs> okay. If you don't want to upload a random file, well, actually, no, I'll do a real specimen. I'm just doing this because I am proceeding forward, being able to do, being able to show you what I'm doing here. You have to describe the specimen. And then, so I'm going to say screenshot of website where services offered for sale in conjunction with, whoops, with Mark. So the date of first use anywhere, whoops, let's show the eye so you can see this, month, date, year. Okay, so it doesn't give you an explanation of what that is. All right, so first use anywhere, first use in commerce. So in commerce isn't just mean that you've offered your stuff for sale, it means it's monetized, okay? That's the way I typically do it. So I'm just gonna say today's date, 09, 21, 2024. What in the world? Well, this is a little bit weird. It's like doesn't, it kind of isn't replacing that, but that's fine. Website screenshots, you actually have to do the URL. And then I'm gonna do, ooh, it has a little pop-up, today's date. This, which goods does the specimen apply to? Ooh, and you can check the box. We're gonna save it and then continue. Okay, does any of this apply to you? That you want to disclaim something, it has geographical significance, you have an active prior registration, acquired distinctiveness, you have additional information and concurrent use. So typically, the time this really can kind of come up is like, let's say I want to trademark San Francisco Bread Company, which is a terrible name, by the way, for a trademark, but let's say you did. Well, San Francisco, you don't have rights over the word San Francisco. It's like a city, right? So then you would have to check that box because it's just a, it's a geographical area that's related. Now, that's not always true. So I had a client one time who her name was a name that was integrated into the trademark. And so I had to state that that was her name, right? It came from, we had to give permission, right? In the likeness thing. But it, that name also happens to be the name of a city in another country. And she actually didn't even know that. I was the one that told her that. So it actually had no relationship to that city. So we didn't have to worry about that part. But if her business had been located in that city, then it would have come up. That's what I mean. All right, then you have to review all the information carefully for accuracy and completeness. All right, so let's just go back to the previous because I want to show you something of how if you check different boxes, different things happen. So let's say your filing basis actually is intent to use. Yes, you don't aren't actually using this in commerce, okay? So the idea of goods and services still is there, all right? And all that stuff stays the same over there. But then you don't have to add a specimen because you don't have a specimen because you haven't been using it. So it dynamically changes what's there. All right, let's get to the last screen. So you check over everything. You'd want to check over all this stuff. Obviously, if you're filing yourself, you, there's no contact or information for a lawyer. And then the signature method, sign directly, send this to someone else to sign, upload. I know If you're doing this yourself, you would sign it directly. And then you have to declare all these things. I recommend you actually read them. I've read them many, many times. I don't need to read them right now. And then you sign it. Obviously, you would do your own name here, okay? And then you have to put your relationship. So I always put a record, but you would put owner if you were the owner of the business. And then here you hit pay now, and then you go to this payment site, and then you put in your credit card information. So that's how the system works. I actually think it's much less clunky than the old system. Right now, it's only, I think it's only set up for lawyers, I don't think there's a way for you to do this as a non-lawyer yet because it's there. the beta testing is for lawyers to test. But I think this will be a much easier system to use. And so hopefully they'll get the kinks worked out and then you'll be able to use this going forward. And then once this is released to the public as the main system, I will redo my tutorials <laughs> uh, for y'all. So you can use this new system to file your trademark application. Again, this is Attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you would like to ask any questions about what I did today, feel free to ask them in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up to find this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.